Hello, welcome back to the Ham Radio Guy podcast. Today we're here with Free Antenna Modeling and the True Live Lines.com um, company. And we'll be talking with Gary and Molly. And uh, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Gary K7 EMF, and this is Molly, our daughter, who is the manufacturing manager for uh, True Ladder Line and Antennas. All right, and um, you're, we're here at Hamcation 2024. Uh, welcome, and thanks for being here. Have you been here before? We have not. This you is our been? this is our first one. Okay, very good. And uh, True Ladder Line, how long you been around? True Ladder Line has been around for a long time. We have owned the company for about three years. Wow, very cool. Yeah. Well, uh, glad to have you here at Hamcation, and uh, hopefully the, you'll have a good showcase of your product here. And we want to talk about that a little bit today. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit what your product is and how it works and what the scope of it is, and we'll get into a little bit more details as well. Okay, well, our, uh, our claim to fame, as it were, is uh, high efficiency, uh, multi-band antenna and feed line. So, so high efficiency means uh, above 90% typically in efficiency and uh, our antennas operate from 160 through 10 meters with uh, no tuned elements, loading coils, and all that stuff. Sure, and how long is that antenna roughly that you're carrying? The, Especially if you're going to 160, it could be quite long. Right, the 160-10, which is the 160 through 10 meters, and Molly could show you one here. This is an, actually an 8010. Okay, it is, 100, it is 240 feet long, and then then the customer chooses the length of ladder line and typically uh, the only problem we really have is whether the antenna tuning unit can resolve the impedance presented to it by the feed line. So in order to figure that out we actually do free system, antenna system and feed line modeling and the tuner. We do that free of charge and we also offer that same software that we use for free to any customer who would like to use it. So we do modeling for customers and non-customers as well. Awesome, that's great. I think we, we talked about this a little bit before and you showed me a demonstration early on. And can we kind of go over to the computer and look at that modeling a little Absolutely. bit and show that your efficiency of this? Absolutely. So we've got to go to their computer here. We'll get zoomed in on this just a little bit here. Okay. And we'll talk about that modeling system. Okay, so we're gonna bring up the software is called SimNEC. And uh, within SimNEC, this is actually the, the setup for the antenna, the height above ground, the length of the antenna, height of the feed point. This is the choice of ladder line or any other feed line you want to use. We stick to 600 ohm or 450. So we're using ladder line in this scenario? Yes. And, uh, and then that goes to the antenna tuning unit. And this is the capacitor for tuning and then you can also tune the roller inductor. So I'm going to tune the capacitor, so I just click on the box and hit the up-down keys and you can see over here the results. See how the, so 50 as ohms is right in the as middle. He, as he changes that, it's changing the numbers over here in this modeling exactly. system. Exactly. So now I'm going to, I'll go ahead and put it back to where it was, increase my capacity, which is right here. Hopefully viewers watching this later can see this. As he's got it yeah. kind of back and center there. And then we're going to switch over to the inductors, which is right here. And I'm going to lower, reduce the size of the inductors. Now we're at 3.2 microhenries. And you can see over here on the results on the Smith yeah, chart okay, on that it's gone over to the side. So the idea is to get it right in the middle, which is close to there. And then we're, our generator or transmitter is outputting 1,000 watts. And over here, it's showing us 983 watts to the antenna. So that means that we're running 98.3% efficiency. So that, that's really incredible of what you're getting out of most oh, antennas, absolutely. you know, across the board. So you can't way really higher, beat that. Way higher than most. Absolutely. And this is across from 160 to 10 meters. This is not just a single frequency. This is all the way across all these bands. And then our feed line length is 45 feet. In this case, this is the true ladder line. This, this is, is this is where you can kind of go in and change it for the customer and say, well, we've got a coax level or, or length of 75 feet, right? And this is what we need to have to be able to do this. Exactly. So we load in his parameters and then we run the the model and when we get a resolution with the ATU, we take a look at the values. 
So right here it's saying that we need 4.88 microhenries, which is within the range of most ATUs. They usually go from about uh, a half a microhenry to 15 microhenries or 20. So okay. we're in the range with that. The capacitor is showing 12.42 picofarads, which is not very much. A lot of ETUs can't get down that small that small of value. Ours goes down to 10 picofarads, so ours our ETU will be able to resolve. This. And that's one of the other products you're showcasing here at the uh, Hamcation 2024 yes. here. And that's just across the other side, as we've got uh, the. Uh, Kind of a model here. Uh, you want to explain this a little bit and what we got going on here with this? Uh... Okay, this is a balanced ATU. So the RF comes in over here from your transmitter or transceiver, goes through the ballon, through the roller inductors, and out. And this is the feed line. We're simulating the impedance of a uh, of my antenna on 75 meters, 39.25 sure. kilohertz. This is the vacuum variable that we do the tuning with and then we have vacuum relays that change from high impedance to low impedance mode and also we can add in more capacity for longer for a higher range as in the lower parts of the band. We control it with a stepper tune which is this guy. So up here if you pan up here for a second this is return loss numbers and right now we're running a little over 50 dB return loss and it's memorized so I'm going to and this is at the high end of 80 meters, 75 meters, 3950. So I'm going to hit memory one, and now it's it's tuning. You can pan down here. Yep. You can see the roller inductors moving, and then you can look up here again. And you can see where it has gone to the preset, and there's the preset for the other for the other memory position, which is 3550 kilohertz. And so we have 16 memories in the stepper tune. This controls two stepper motors. This one here. This is the other stepper motor which drives, this one drives both of the roller inductors. You can also tune it manually. So I'm tuning it manually and you can... So it drives both of them in parallel or tandem. And you can see how the, the tuning is changing up there on the network analyzer. Now I'm going to go back the other way. And then I can also tune the capacitor, which is driven by this stepper motor. Huh. So the controller also has the ability to, when you first start your tuning, it starts slow once you shut when it oh, right down no, here. No, back here. Yeah. Now you see when I first hit the button it goes slow and then it ramps up. It ramps up right. So that gives you the ability to fine tune. Oh wow. Okay. And then also the stepper tune BT also controls all the capacitor switching. So if you want to focus on this. Yep. So right now it's in the low impedance mode. If I switch this to high you can see how the, the tuning has gone away. I can, I'll switch it back to low impedance. And then this is capacitor one, and that's this one here. So I, that one's switched in and out with that vacuum relay. That's changing. Yep. And then this is capacitor two. So I can, these, these two capacitor banks are paralleled in with the vacuum variable for wider range tuning. So in what type of situation for maybe if someone who's a new ham or, or maybe a little bit not as familiar with this type of setup or information, how would this, what would this look like in their house or um, would this something they'd have set up inside their house and inside, okay. a, inside a case? We, this ordinarily, we have two different packages. One is we sell this with uh, an enclosure, right? a weatherproof enclosure. And in my installation, my QTH has an example, I mount it right at the base of the tower. Oh, really? So I come down from the, the antenna feed point with the ladder line all the way down, just kind of just like this here. In fact, let me show you a picture of it. Okay. And actually, that's, that's my tower right there with the feed line coming down. And this is another picture of it looking up on a different perspective. This is the top of the ATU enclosure. And this is 
ladder line coming down. I do not have a picture of the actual ATU here. That's right, but we under, people understand where that comes in and whatnot. Right, um, right. And, how that and we have a, bit. so the, so the ATU typically resides outside, close to the antenna underneath typically. The separate tune resides at the operating position. And it, this is connected to the ATU 4K with two Cat5 cables, so it's quite That's inexpensive. It's pretty easy. Yeah. Pretty easy to take and, out and go outside with that. And, and inexpensive. Inexpensive, yeah. oh, for sure. Yep. And then we have a second version, which is the indoor version, that's basically like this. And you can park that on a shelf somewhere in the radio room or out in the garage if you want, something along that line. And then you control it with a stepper tune again. Because remember, these are stepper motors. You can't just put DC to them and make them run. Right. So, huh. so very interesting. And what does some like this roughly run uh, for, for people to set this, this up? This runs in round numbers somewhere around two grand. This is uh, four, I think it's four hundred and forty dollars. Okay. And you can purchase them individually. So okay. we have quite a few customers who just use one of these with their own tuner. So you know, with some other antennas out there, this is very uh, reasonable in cost overall. Well, I personally think it's dollars, but I, I mean, personally think it's high, but. Unfortunately, the cost of materials these days is just outrageous. Yeah, no, a a absolutely. Uh, and so we, she showcased an antenna that went from 80, uh, 10 to 80 earlier. Molly. Was there some other antennas uh, as well that maybe some options? And I think you also have one that's 440 now, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so okay. We don't have that with us. Okay. Um, but we also sell ladder lines to attach to your. Oh. I'll, give, I'll give her the mic. Too. So that way she can be heard well. There you go, perfect. We also sell um, ladder lines that attach to your own antenna, and we can build those custom. We list um, 35, 50, 75, 100, okay. all the way up to 300 feet on our site. The largest ladder line we've done is 1,000 feet long. Wow. Um, and so we can do those any length that are needed. And we do a 160-10 um, antenna with a any kind any size of ladder line needed. Then okay. we do an 80-10, a 40-10, and a 15-10. Gotcha. And you guys are doing. Hmm? Oh, and we also do loops. Uh, the largest loop antenna we've done is a 600 with 150 foot ladder line. And we list those on our site, but those can also be custom to whatever size is needed. Okay, very cool. And you guys are giving a presentation on this system something tomorrow? Yes. Um, tomorrow at 9.15. Sorry. <laughs> tomorrow at 9.15, yes. Okay, so uh, if you're attending Hamcation and you're watching this video this evening, uh, and you're going to be here, uh, come down to uh, the seminar building and uh, have them at 9.15, you're giving a person yes. you want room is by chance yet? C2, I believe. C2. I believe. All right. I have one more comment too. If oh, you sure, honest. absolutely. Feel free to add it. We just came up with a new product, which is a 450 true ladder line, which is built just like this 600, only one inch wire spacing. And we've had very good success with that as well. And what's the... Uh, and the reason for having both impedances is so if we have a problem with resolution, ATU resolution on a band, we can switch to the other feed line, go from one to the other in either direction. Oh, interesting. And hopefully be able to resolve that issue. Oh, very good. So it's basically another tool. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. You have a little redundancy and it never hurts. So, um, all right. Okay. Well, well uh, thank you for Gary, taking a look at us. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining the Ham Radio Guy podcast. And Molly, you do as thank well. Thank you. And I appreciate it. And uh, we will uh, hopefully have you stop by the True Ladder Line Antennas uh, booth here or check them out online at truelighterline.com. And thank you again for joining me here on the Ham Radio Guy podcast. And we'll be talking to you soon.